Cousin Sal's winning weekend. It's October. Spooky season is here. Extra spooky if you're still starting Mark Andrews on your fantasy team. Yeah, the NFL has cooked up some good Week 5 matchups, but before we get to them, let's first recap last night's hot Atlanta head-scratcher between the Falcons and the Bucks. All right, the game begins, and look at this, a Kyle Pitts sighting. I thought he quit and joined the Coast Guard. Atlanta drives down the field, Cousins back to pass again, and Drake starts the London game a couple days early to put the Falcons up 7-0. But then Mike Evans gets free for a touchdown. Nobody wants to cover that guy, really? Falcons answer back, big boy catch by Darnell Mooney. It's 14-10 birds, Baker to Evans again, touchdown number 100. This kid's going to be good someday. Bucks add another and lead at the half, 24-17. This one's headed over. Falcons come out in the third quarter and ah, who cares about the rest? I'm not even watching. My Mets pull off a miraculous win. Yes, look at them celebrate and call me P. Giddy. Maybe don't do that. As for the gridiron, the Falcons win the coin toss in overtime and are thusly immediately rewarded with the win 36-30. Wow, the NFC South really could have a team finish over 500 this year. Wild to think about. Coming up, Super Bowl MVP and New York Giants great Phil Simms will join us. He's going to offer his thoughts on which team and city he believes is a great fit for Bill Belichick. And I'm going to give him a free AFC championship bet. Spoiler, he's not taking the Jaguars. Then, my childhood friend, he's all grown up now, the parlay kid will help me break down the Week 5 slate. And coming up, I've got a wager rager that will last at least until we turn the calendar I'll explain in a bit. But before any of that, we're going to try something fun here. I am infatuated, as you know, with Sunday football viewing. The standard watch party just isn't enough for me. So over the years, I've invested in some bells and whistles that the normal red zone zombies can experience. See for yourself. Running with the Olympic torch. For instance, at any time, I have the ability to eat anything I see on my TV. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got the whole bird. <laughs> Not only that, if I don't like a call, I can personally interact with the dingbat officials. Holding. Really? Offense number 60. It's in oh, this Philly. guy is the we worst. Replace our down. Oh, and the best part is, after a big win, my TV setup pays me off instantaneously. Amazing, right? But it occurred to me that my setup may be a tad more extravagant than most others. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to send me a video of your pathetic TV setup. Drop that video directly to me on Twitter at the cousin Sal. Hashtag my TV is crap. Don't be ashamed. I won't judge you. Well, actually, I will judge you because the video I deem most depressing will win a brand new 50-inch flat screen TV courtesy of me. This is no joke. Your Sunday viewing experience will already improve with a brand new television set so starting this weekend send me those videos of your lame football setup and may the worst one win but right now it's time for my irrationally angry attempt to make rational sense of a somewhat irrational bet it's wagery <laughs> FanDuel Sportsbook has done a wonderful thing. Not only can you now bet on who the highest score is during a given week or for the entire year, but now they've made it so you could bet on who will lead the league in rushing in a given month. Yes, once a month. Like every time you go to trim your toenails, remind yourself to bet another monthly leader. My toenails and I are targeting Derrick Henry, who's averaged over 170 yards a game over the last two weeks at plus 360 to lead the league in rushing yards from weeks five through nine. That's it, five through nine. Seems easy peasy, and if he has to, I know the D-Train will run through a wall of coffee cups full of pumpkin spice latte to get it done. That's my wager, Ager. Now, let's get to our interview with quarterback legend Phil Simms. The great Phil Simms. I'm going to go to Disney World. All right, let's bring in our guest. He's a Super Bowl MVP, a member of the New York Giants Ring of Honor. You can currently hear him on the Sims Complete podcast, where each week he dazzles us with his NFL expertise while threatening to send his co-host son, Matt, to his room without supper. He's got both a golden arm and a golden head of hair. Phil Sims, welcome back to the show. Oh, I like that. Yes, that was great. Thank you, Sal. Man, finally <laughs> getting some respect. My damn sons, they don't show me none. <laughs> you so, deserve it. You deserve uh, some respect. 
And deserving you know what? Gives them the two different things. <laughs> That's true. So. That's true. I'm wondering if the NFL deserves some respect for getting the offenses back in sync. Am I speaking too soon? But I feel like when I was watching that early slate of games in the 1 p.m. window, where we're now usually used to, you know, two quarterbacks having like 45 yards passing at halftime, there was a yeah. little bit of an offensive explosion. Am I? Am I just? Um, is this hopeful thinking, or is this about where it takes a turn in the season? No, it's it's uh, it's hopeful. Yes, it's good, and uh, many things. Now the offense is getting them more rhythm. It takes to me a lot longer for the offense to catch rhythm than it does the defense. And mm -hmm. maybe the biggest thing, even when I was in the league, I always used to think, man, if I make it through week four. I'll be okay because those first four weeks, everybody on the defensive side, they're as fast and as fresh as they're going to be all year long. And the NFL, it's true. It really does slow down. And it, like I said, it did back in my day. Sometimes you'd play a team, let's say week one, it's in your division. And then you play in week 11, you look at the tape and you go, damn, what happened? You know, yeah. it's amazing to see the difference. So I think we're seeing that in the NFL and the quarterbacks are just getting in rhythm and they're all playing. We have a lot of quarterbacks playing well. Okay. So now that said, we've seen a bunch of quarterbacks struggle, um, backups, starters, proving they're right. having a tough time stepping up. I want to talk to you about like backups in general and how, well, why do you think a team like Miami, who is used to two is, you know, uh, ha having been injury prone, why don't they go out and sign a Joe Flacco? Why don't they have a capable back up there and Joe Flacco I think they got him for four and a half million dollars my part two to that question is are we going to see it where a backup is making as much as a uh, a premier running back in this league I think it's coming I do the perfect backup for Tua would be Bryce Young as soon as, that, as soon as it happened I thought about it boy it'd be interesting if they had a quarterback just like Tua which they don't have and we'll see how it works out for him down the road. Um, he has a brother, Tua, who has uh, been in the college ranks for 14 years. I don't know if they could pull him out. I'm not sure what the rules are uh, with that. Yeah. I feel like we could, could see that any day now. And something that could really reshuffle the order um, is what the Raiders said earlier this week, they're open to trading Devontae Adams for a package. I think that would include like a second round pick and additional compensation. I feel like Al Davis would never trade a division rival, but what about Mark Davis? Could, could, would he send Devontae Adams to the chiefs? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Well, first off, can the chiefs with their salary cap get it? Yeah. I was looking over a bunch of stuff. They can, they can afford it. I think it'd be tight, but you know, a little creative accounting says uh, that they could pull it off. Yeah. Well, I, I it, listen, do what's best for your team. So if the Raiders, you know, it's about, it's going to be about money because Devontae Adams is guaranteed money, I think is up right now after this year. So mm -hmm. he's looking for some reinforcement, you know, whatever, because of all these guys, what they signed for. But I would not be afraid of pushing to the Kansas City Chiefs if I think it's really good for my team. Second round pick, if it's that, saving money, money that we can spend on other people. And, um, of course, it would be a great move for the Chiefs. But yeah. that wouldn't shock me. And I don't – you know, the Jets, the, everybody keeps talking about the Jets. Well, they come here, it's money again. And I guess it's – you do it because it's desperation. Because if you don't win, you know – you're going to be looking somewhere else for, for work when this is over. So, right. you know, the New York Jets have to win this year. So I wouldn't doubt if they're going to be in this heavy. And if they have to, they'll make whatever decision they think is going to give them a chance to win in the short term, not long term. I, I just look at Devontae Adams' body language, and he so clearly doesn't want to play with the Raiders. And right. does this, as a prospective employer, bug anybody? Or do people say, well, we've seen enough out of the real Devontae Adams, so we don't care about this attitude or this perceived attitude? No, there. yeah, I mean, yes, they're, they're, that will turn some people off. You know, when that thing that Peyton Manning, the receivers last year, when I watched all that, you know, I kind of saw the uh, – he wasn't satisfied at times out there with the Raiders. And so this doesn't come as any surprise to anybody that follows the NFL and uh, why he would be frustrated and, um, you know, a lot of things going on, but I'm sure he'll be moved somewhere here soon. Speaking of frustrations, I, I mean, I had high hopes for the Jaguars. I thought they came back. I would thought they'd win that AFC South. I thought Houston was a little bit overvalued and boy, was I wrong. They are now 0-4 Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence's ninth consecutive loss and obviously Doug Peterson's ninth consecutive loss. How much of a leash does Doug, Doug Peterson have? I feel like if he loses home against Indy this week, 
I don't even think he needs to renew his passport for London. I think he's done. Wow. Uh, I haven't thought of it that way. You could be right. I know Ten in that, a row. What, I mean, what's it going to lose? 13 no, in a row? I know. 12? I know. No. It's just, listen, unless it's a tremendous turnaround, he's going to be gone when the year's over. I don't know if it does you any good, unless you think there's somebody on the staff that's mm-hmm. totally different from Doug Peterson who's going to bring a different personality and a different way, and that can change pretty quick in the NFL. I thought against Houston, they played extremely hard, and they played tough as hell. And my question to that would be, where's that been? Why Mm -hmm. didn't we see this before? And then Trevor Lawrence, you know, I never got into this generational talent thing. I never said it. I never believed in it, anything. But just throwing the football, you know, and I always say this, you got it. You can't miss. You can't miss routine throws in the NFL. You just yeah. can't. When you're a professional quarterback, you're making more money than, you know, the money is huge. Yeah. But so you got to hit him, and he's he's been off target this year. And I can see why. His there's something he does physically throwing the ball that causes him to overthrow sometimes, and it's really backfired on him. Oh, I thought you were going to say his hair is getting in his eyes, and yet that as a <laughs> as a concerned well, father, I'm, I'll hey, get to you. Yeah, I met Trevor Lawrence this off season. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, the hair was unbelievable. It really <laughs> has to stay. <laughs> but the other okay. thing is I could not get over how big he is. Yeah. I mean, Oh my God. I was like, I, he was answering questions. I'm going, man, you're big. That's all I can keep thinking. <laughs> oh, he's wide shoulder. He's just a big dude. And he has all the talent to be a true franchise quarterback, but man, there's more to it than just doing that. Are you affecting the team? I always say this, and I was taught this by Bill Parcells. Hey, Sims, you you can have more influence on the team besides me. That's Mm -hmm. next. You know, you got to do what you're supposed to do. You know, lead the guys, be tough when you got to be, all this other stuff. And uh, you need to do that too. And I don't know if Trevor Lawrence, if if that's in his personality to be that guy. Yeah, big week coming up, I think, against the Colts. All right, Phil Sims is going to stick around. We've got a Cousins conundrum with him and lots more when Cousin Sal's winning weekend returns. All right, welcome back to Cousin Sal's winning weekend here with a man who holds the highest passer rating in a Super Bowl and the highest guest rating on our show. Both very prestigious, fabulous (laughs) Phil Sims is here. Phil, I want to talk about MetLife because if uh, fans went to both games, the Jets and the Giants, the Giants on Thursday against the Cowboys and then the Jets home uh, against Denver, they saw the home team combined for eight field goals, no touchdowns and two losses. And it got me thinking, I used to think, wow, there's just too many teams at the Meadowlands. MetLife, Meadowlands shouldn't share two teams. I'm now thinking they should add a third just to have a better chance of winning. It's rough. I don't know what to say. If, you know, first and foremost, the stadium, and I don't mean this, I, I don't want to be mean about it. It just has no uh, personality. So the, the stadium is just not, I don't know, it, it doesn't excite me at all. And even yeah. when I'm there as a fan, as I watch games or whatever, not that that has any, but, you know, it's early. But when you when your team fighting to find wins and you lose close games, Man, that that can change the whole season. When Do you think this Aaron Rodgers, Robert Sala thing is just the New York media trying to create something, or is it? Just, are there real issues and, and tension between them? Now, the, this week it's about the snap count and the cadence and stuff like that. Well, they, look. Ever since Aaron Rodgers has been there, every day he's drawing people off sides in practice. Sure, and he, he there's nobody likes a free play more than him, and uh, that's his that's his big thing. So. Uh, yeah, it, it's not – Robert Sala kind of bringing it up. I think he kind of wishes he wouldn't have said anything because that's well, – Why would a coach have a problem with that? That is like one of his superpowers, as you said, Aaron Rodgers. What could what could the coach – what could his beef be with that? Well, the beef is they had five, you know, pre-snap penalties. That's yeah. the – and, you know, you know, and it's not always just, oh, the snap. Denver's defense is a blitzing machine. Mm-hmm. They're fast. They can cover – I think that had something to do with the the, the pre-snap penalties. You've done it all, obviously. You know, well-established, renowned quarterback. You go to the booth. You do the color commentary. You, you've done the studio stuff. I'm going to defend Tom Brady a little bit, who has been said to have gotten off to a rocky start. 
Is it the worst thing in the world to say he just might be a better studio guy? Oh, no, it's probably not the worst thing. But, you know, when you're a studio guy, you got a lot of time to think about what you're going right. to say. And mm -hmm. which is sometimes to me, it made it worse because I got, well, I got four things. Which one do I pick? I don't know what the hell. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, doing the games, man, to me, there's nothing like doing the games. So I watched the first game of the year and I thought he did okay. Mm -hmm. And I keep reading that he's doing better. So uh, I, I kind of liked he had a little scuffle with Baker Mayfield last week. That was Yeah, cool. about having fun. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Baker. I mean, come on, Baker. Baker, the best thing about Baker Mayfield, I really like him as a player, his personality, what he does for a football team. And Todd Bowles was asked, how do you explain Baker Mayfield? And he says, well, if I told Baker to go over there and stick his face into the fan, he would. And wow. I said, that says it all. That's, that's <laughs> he's not a smart person. Is that what yeah. he's saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, you can be too smart. Let me tell you. So, <laughs> right. So now back to Brady real quick. So he'll now always constantly compare it to Bill Belichick, who now has uh, 15 jobs commentating <laughs> on football during the week, um, which I think is great. Do you, the gun to your head. Is he back coaching next year? They've been talking about the Eagles, some other spots. He could even for my Cowboys. Um, what do you think? He's back in the saddle. I would say if I had to say yes or no, he'll be back in the saddle. Yes. Hmm. And Interesting. It'll probably, probably be a pretty good job. It's a team. One of these teams that we have high expectations for, if it falls apart, Look out, Bill Belichick be, could be coming in, and man, will that change? Whoever, wherever he goes, it's going to be a stark contrast, that's for sure. And I'm trying to think. So it's got. It, you know, we're not talking about eight or nine teams. It's really only no, a couple options, couple. right? Yeah. So I, I don't know if Jerry Jones. Listen to me. It's just like he just doesn't want to share credit. He'd rather not win a Super Bowl than share credit. So I don't. I don't know if that that would very much surprise me. But the I, Eagles, I think, I think, would make more sense. I guess I don't know. No, oh, I mean, come on, walk it. If you know, I don't want to say fire Nick Sirianni. I don't want to get into that and all that now. But but if he walked in there, yeah, uh, boy, that's walking into about as good a place as you could ever walk into as a head coach taking over for somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's and you know Philadelphia would love him because he's Andre and as mean as all the fans are down there, so, right? <laughs> man, I'll tell you, Sal, it was real playing down in Philadelphia. Of course. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were wickedly tough on defense with, you know, Jerome Brown, Reggie White. Oh, my yeah. gosh. But the fans were tough, too. And uh, it's it's got to be a great place for players and a coach when you have su a success, that's for sure. Yeah, whatever the fans threw at Belichick, he'd pick it up and throw it right back, I think. So, yeah, you got, you got a nice match there. All right, listen, I want to give you, before we get to the conundrum, I want to give you a free bet for the rest of the season. I'm actually going to put this in for you on FanDuel. It could be an award. It could be a team to make or miss the playoffs or – even the Super Bowl, my treat. Let's do the AFC champion. Okay, AFC champion. So I'm going to go to conferences. And uh, all right, so yeah, we discussed this, right? So the Chiefs are a three to one favorite. Then you have the Ravens behind them, plus 370. And the Bills, plus 410. You want to go down the list a little? Texans, 550. Jets, then you get double digits. Jets are 14 to one and the Bengals, 16 Texans to one. Texans would worry me. Yep. Texans, would, you know, they, I can see that. No, I want the Baltimore Ravens. You do? Okay. Uh, absolutely. I just right. I think they're going to continue to get better. You know, I know. And my thing is always, well, look how hard Derrick Henry is going to be to tackle in January. <laughs> he's averaging 170 yards the last two games on the ground. And it's uh, a yeah. calendar just flipped to October. Very scary. <laughs> Very well, I scary. Think the big thing there is everybody was moaning and groaning. You got to run him more and all this. No. I saw him in Tennessee almost every one of those years – he was ran out mm -hmm. by the time they came to the sometimes the playoffs because they just used him so much to win games. And Baltimore yeah. wants to do that. They're going to, hey, they know how to pace him. I, it wouldn't shock me somewhere at week nine, Derrick Henry's not playing this week. Interesting. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't shock me. You know, John Harbaugh is pretty, pretty smart and got a great feel for all that stuff. And, man, he knows how to manage players. Phil, before we let you go, we have one last question. This is called sure. Cuz's Conundrum. Cuz's Conundrum. Ooh. All right, you ready? Here's the conundrum. It's something I don't think you've ever been asked before, but you could tell okay. me. You are one of the most accurate quarterbacks of all time. So you are given three footballs. 
and you must throw them through a tire from 10 yards out. You've seen this carnival game, right? You get three sure. balls, throw them through a tire. Sure. If you make all three, you get a stuffed animal and that animal is stuffed with $10 million. Damn. But if you miss even one, right. once a month for the rest of your life, Lawrence Taylor sacks you out of nowhere. You don't even know when it's coming. Right. Do you take the deal? Absolutely. Wow. Not even thinking. I mean, sign me up. So is this an indictment of um, you, you know you're going to nail the three throws or I, you don't think Lawrence Taylor's very, tough and you don't care? I would be very surprised if I didn't throw all three right through it. And yeah. I might even do it underhanded. That's, that's how I throw the ball. Really? Better. Okay. Yeah. But Lawrence Taylor, yeah, it's worth taking a hit from him. And he always said, Tim's just – just once I just once I go, yeah, but you can't. <laughs> if you miss this time. tire throw, he can. What but once yeah, a month, yeah, in no, fact. You know, yeah. as long as I don't know what's coming, it doesn't hurt as bad. Just I see. Out. <laughs> yeah, right. So. That's when people get hurt. They tense up, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But that, that's a pretty damn good one. But oh, I I mean for real, I would take it. I'm going to try to set it up. I know some okay. carnival guys and uh, uh it's just gonna uh, the stay there. Dollars. 10 yards. 10 yards. 10 yards. Yeah. 10 yards. But think oh. about the fear of Lawrence Taylor. I mean, he might be ready right there to sack you right as, as soon as you miss. Reggie White crushed me many times. Jerome <laughs> Brown, Richard Dent, Charles Haley. Right. Okay. Lawrence might be the best of all of them, but well, maybe I, I can't take like I used to. <laughs> <I'm a little laughs> well, we'll see. We're going to get this going. We're going to. Oh do my this. gosh. This will be, this will be hilarious. Of course, you know, I'm going to do the tire thing, but there's no way we're going to have Lawrence hit me. So I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lawrence will hear about this and they'll be at your door before you know oh, it. Before my this interview is over. Oh my God. Ooh, <laughs> all right. Gosh. Listen to Phil and Matt Sims every week on the Sims complete podcast. Phil, you are the best. Thanks for being here. Sal, thanks for having me on. A lot of fun, and um, good luck to you, too. You got it. The Parlay Kid and I go over all the Week 5 games next on Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. Sal's winning weekend, a big primetime game for Dallas this week, means I had to invite my Cowboys cousin in from the Against All Odds podcast. Darren, the parlay kid is here. What's happening? What's going on, Sal? Thanks for having me. Darren, earlier I was talking to Phil Sims of the cousin's conundrum that he was presented with, and I know you could relate to this, all right? He gets to throw three footballs through a tire from 10 yards away, much like uh, you would do at a carnival. If he hits all of them, he gets a stuffed animal, much like you would in a carnival. But this one is stuffed with $10 million. And if he misses just one, he gets sacked once a month by Lawrence Taylor. Doesn't even know when it's coming. You are our high school quarterback. Very good. You could still sling it. Do you take that deal? Well, that's a, that certainly is a conundrum there, Sal. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, I think Dr. Phil there said yes to that. And by the way, put Sims in the Hall of Fame already. And yeah. I would say yes to that. So I think, look, I'm a family man. $10 million getting sacked by LT. I'd have to make sure I was on soft surfaces at all times. Uh, <laughs> okay. have, had I missed one of those throws, spending a lot of time at the beach, maybe <laughs> for the rest of my life. I see. Right. Okay. Make sure you're not hit hard. Yeah. You know, you're a family man, but you don't want your family watching you uh, eat cinnamon toast out of a straw for the next 25 years. So I could see that. All right. Listen, uh, let's get into these week five games. First of all, week two, you were seven and eight. You come back for more. Harry did better the second time. You will as well. I was nine and six last week. I'm 33 and 27 on the year. But for week five, let's start with the game across the pond between the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. Is that right? And the New York Jets, the totally we're getting along great New York Jets, if you will. So Minnesota is a two and a half point favorite. The over under is 40 and a half. Like I said, this is in London. It's an intriguing game. I wonder if the NFL is bummed out that they buried this at 630 in the morning on the West Coast mm. instead of making it a feature or even a night game. But anyway, Sam Darnold laying points to Aaron Rodgers is hilarious. And it's, so this is why football is the best. And I like the Jets here. This is why it may not be the best for me. I'm taking them on the money line, Parlay Kid. I know the Vikings have been perfect, flawless, 4-0, 4-0 against the number. 
Jets, believe it or not, though, second best defensively overall, 256 yeah. yards per game. I think they stay in this. You know, they're gonna they're gonna overcome that early onslaught from the Vikings, which may not happen due, due to jet lag. So you may see like a sluggish Vikings team, and that's where maybe teams could take advantage. A lot of expectation from Kevin O'Connell's team overseas. I think the Jets do a good job from keeping within striking distance. Breakout game from Garrett Wilson eventually. J-E-T-S 23-17. The Jets win in London. What do you like? I like that, Sal, but save the 6.30 a.m. tears for someone else when we're staying up to midnight to watch all these uh, events here on the East Coast. Midnight. You're lucky with that UFC <laughs> if you get to bed at midnight. You're right. You know it. But I'm taking a haul. I'm staying away from the game. Hall over 49 and a half rushing yards for the Jets. He can't be happy with his 10-carry four-yard performance of a week ago. He's got Braylon Allen breathing down his neck for more playing time. He went over this number in his previous three games. Before that, the Jets going to want to keep this Vikings offense off the field. It starts with running the ball, haul over 49 and a half rushing yards. All right, I think you're right. If I, my pick is going to win, yours is going to have to win. So let's go to Cincinnati. Baltimore is a two and a half point favorite on the road. 48 and a half is the over under. The Ravens look like the best team in football beating up on the Bills was that Sunday night. And then the Bengals got their first win win over the Panthers last week. They are trying to not drop to one and four. I'm not as convinced as everyone else that they're going to claw their way back to a playoff contention. I do think the Ravens regress a little this week. They may win the game, but I think they stay under 26 and a half. The last eight games, the Ravens are five, two and one under 27 points. Henry averaging 170 plus a game the last two weeks. I think he takes a step back this week against Lou Anarumo's defense. Sheldon Rankins, B.J. Hill, Trey Hendrickson are going to try to make it a go, from what I understand on defense. They're getting a little healthier there, and they usually show up. The defense is doing these kitchen sink games. Last year, they allowed over 27, the Bengals did, at home just once in nine home games. I think they keep the Ravens down to a formidable mid low 20s, 24-21 final. I'll say Tucker blows it again. What do you like? Well, so you might not like mine then, as I feel uh, I'm going with both teams to score a touchdown in each half. Take the yes on that. I've had success in this wager before. First time going it with it this year. The Ravens have scored a TD in seven out of their eight halves of football. And the Bengals have done the same. And actually seven games in a row for Cincy where they've scored a touchdown in a half after that first half debacle against New England in game one. Both offenses are finding their strides right now. I've hit this before, Sal. Let's take it again. Both teams to score a touchdown in each half. All right. I don't mind this if, as I predicted, Tucker just misses all his field goals and you get like three touchdowns or something like that. This is a this is a glutton bet, though, Parley Kid. You know how we're sitting through those 1 p.m. games and that first half is usually miserable, but there was some scoring. <laughs> I just there need a 7-7 some... seven, seven first half there, so That's it's right. a winner. Give me a 7-7 okay. seven, seven first half. You could get that. Now, a first half that there might not be seven or 14 points in is Chicago and Carolina. The Bears are home, three-and-a-half point favorite, 41-and-a-half is the over-under. I hate this game. This is another Andy Dalton revenge game, but I feel like he's going to have like 32 revenge games. He, he's played for every team yeah. in the league, so every week is a revenge game for him. The Bears seem to have an easy matchup every week too, but I guess that's why they were predicted for eight-and-a-half or nine wins this year. I'm going to take the points here. With Carolina, maybe I'll get embarrassed, but I feel like David Canales' team is playing with some fight on both sides of the ball now that they made the quarterback change. I think I saw that Caleb Williams has 33 or 34 bad throws this year, Parley Kid, which is a is most by a dozen over. Yeah. Can you guess? Can you guess who's second? Don't tell me it's Dak. It's our guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's a distant second. He's a di- like 12, <laughs> 12 away, like low 20s Yikes. for bad throws. And what's a bad throw anyway? Anyway. Caleb Williams, I think, gets one pick. Dalton scores enough. Dalton's put up 60 points in two weeks. Pretty good. I know they were out of it last week uh, and came back. 2019 final. Give me the Panthers and the points. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, Sal. And uh, courtesy of the Action Network here, the Panthers have been an underdog in 33 out of their last 34 games. That's (laughs) outstanding. Hard to believe. But Dalton has given this team life. Five TDs and over 500 yards in the two games he started. And forget Dalton. What about Chuba Hubbard? 
had two straight 100-yard rushing games. That's yeah. almost unheard of for this offense. Uh, he's averaging five and a half yards to carry, as well as Deontay Johnson has gotten into the action, too, with 15 catches and 200 yards since Dalton's arrival as well. The Bears are lucky to be 2-2, two and two, Sal. We both know that. They could easily be sitting at 0-4. Caleb Williams has struggled. I think the Panthers here, their offense has come to life. It'll be good enough to cover this spread. Patriots, one and a half point favorite, 36 and a half is the over under. But I'm going to go under 17 and a half in the first half. This is one of those snoozers. I try to grab the under in Carolina, Cincinnati, first half last week, but the tacklers uh, refused to cooperate. So, but I don't have high hopes for scoring in this one, this Dolphins Pats game. I think 10 7 is about right. Two touchdowns and a field goal will be a lot in this game where you have to know both coaches are going to want to feel each other out. Dolphins with a top five pass defense. And a top six defense overall, which is surprising to me. Conservative first half, offensively averaging fewer than six points total in the first half the Dolphins are. So I'm going to say 10-6 at the break. Still gets me under 17 and a half. What do you got? I like what you're saying there, Sal. But I'm taking Huntley, the quarterback, over (laughs) half a touchdown or just basically to throw a touchdown pass in this game. Paying a hefty price at minus 178. But, geez, look, this guy, I've always liked him as a backup when he was with the Ravens in 36 uh, pass attempts last year, threw three touchdowns with the Ravens. He can get the job done now as he's starting to settle into this Dolphin offense. And let's face it, the Dolphins still have the best players on this offensive side of the ball, the best players on the field with Hill, Waddle, Achan, maybe Mostert's back this week. A nice little dump-off pass to one of them. They go to the they go to the distance. They take it to the house, and I get a win here. I'm paying the price, but he just needs to give me one one TD pass. Um, I think you're going to push on this. I think he's going to get exactly <laughs> a half a touchdown half, pass. Half. You know how Fandle's going to pay it out? You'll just get your money back, and that'll be that. All right, let's go Buffalo at Houston. This is really the marquee matchup of the day. One and a half point favorite on the road. The Bills are 47 and a half is the over-under. It's tough because I think Buffalo is better. You and I both like Buffalo. I have them winning the Super Bowl. But I'm going to go with a player prop instead. That's Josh Allen, anytime touchdown. He started the season with two rushing touchdowns mm-hmm. versus Arizona and nothing the net last the last three games. The last seven of eight, including playoffs, he had a touchdown run. So this is it. So him not scoring the last few weeks, I think this is a part of product of them being either way up or way behind, right. so they're either running the ball, not taking chances with him if they're way up, or throwing the ball if they're way behind. I think this will be a closer game. They'll get to the goal line. Josh Allen will work his magic, get in plus one fifteen to get in a rushing or receiving touchdown for Josh Allen. You have a player prop as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of staying away from this game, even though I kind of would lean towards the Bills in this one as well. Mm-hmm. But Sal, this is a revenge game for Mr. Diggs. Oh, yeah. Uh, for the Texans here against his former team, the Bills. A little animosity, it seemed like, towards the end there. So I'm taking Diggs anytime touchdown at plus 160. Would the Bills love to shut down Diggs? Of course they would. But when you got Nico Collins on the other side uh, of him as well, who's going to, is averaging on pace for 2,000 receiving yards this year, mm. you can't really devote too many resources to cover Diggs. Tank Dell is on the mend. He might be playing as well uh, in this game. I think at some point, Houston is going to try to get this guy into the end zone. Plus 160 for Diggs, anytime touchdown. All right. I have to say, Diggs has been more impressive than than I thought he would be going to Houston, although this is kind of what he does, right? And then he doesn't get the ball for three weeks, and there's a lot of pouting. But, yeah, this is a fun revenge game for him. Alt. It's fun when there's a revenge game that doesn't involve Andy Dalton. All right, let's go Jacksonville (laughs) home, two and a half point favorite, 46 and a half against Indianapolis, this Jags team. I I made them my underdog pick, Parley Kid, two weeks in a row on Ringer uh, pregame show. Uh, Against the Bills Monday night, two weeks ago, that was embarrassing. And and against Houston at Houston last week, which was also in a way embarrassing that they couldn't pull a win out there. But I'm getting off the train. I'm taking the Colts' money line. Now, I'd feel actually more confident if it was Joe Flacco starting than Anthony Richardson. But everything I'm seeing says that Richardson's going to try to give his best effort to suit up on Sunday. Either way, this Jags team has a tendency to look forward to the London games. You know, they're going to play two in a row after this. And 
last year, looking ahead to London, they lost by three touchdowns to Houston. We could see the same thing. Trevor Lawrence has lost nine in a row. This makes 10. The Colts are gutty. We saw them against that Steelers defense. They're going to pull out a close one. And I think we say goodbye to Doug Peterson. I really think that's it. I don't think they're going to let him lose like 14 in a row. I think that's it. 26-22, Indianapolis pulls off the upset. Yeah, I'm going to be taking the Colts on an adjusted line, getting three and a half here, Sal, uh, at minus 140. The Colts are three and one against the spread, but plus I'm adding a point here, and they're mm-hmm. two and oh against the spread as an underdog so far this season. Could this be the end of the line for Coach Peterson and a loss here? It could quite possibly be. The Jags don't seem interested in playing for him anymore. Lawrence has not really stepped up his game. The Jags have scored the third fewest points in the league to date. Like you, Sal, would I feel a little bit more comfortable with Flacco out there instead of Richardson? Probably yes, but I think Richardson is still talented enough to get this done. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little combination of Flacco and Richardson throughout the game. Don't be surprised if we see a little run pass thing going there with those two quarterbacks. But I'm taking the Colts plus three and a half points. That would be something. You know, I want to – I'm trying to think. Could the Jaguars just trade Peterson back to Philly for Sirianni? Fresh start for both coaches who are kind of much maligned at this point. (laughs) Not bad. I'll look into that. You know, I don't know. I haven't heard that before. All right. Washington and Cleveland, last one of the uh, 1 p.m. kickoffs. Washington minus 3, 43 and a half versus Cleveland. It's in the nation's capital. This seems too easy to be true, right? I might make this my rat line on Ring of Pregame Show. The Cliff – Kingsbury offense that doesn't punt against this Browns team that hasn't gone over their team total <laughs> all year long, 0 for 4. Jaden Daniels running away with Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Cleveland's a different kind of mess every week, right? They got shelled by our Cowboys, then they lost a winnable game against the Giants and the Raiders. They beat the Jags. But I do like them in this spot. I think this is big boy territory with Washington laying points at home. Polly kid, you're with me that Deshaun looked better last week. I still think they should go with Jameis eventually, but still yeah. solid defensively. You know, not top three like they were last year. Still 11 or 12 if you look at all the major metrics. Far better than what Jaden Daniels saw last week against Arizona. I think the Brownies pull off the upset 23-19, and then I think this is it, though. I really think that I have to get <laughs> off if they lose it. Yeah, you and I cannot – we cannot quit the Cleveland Browns here, Sal. I can't believe it. They've been too but good to us. Over it's, the years. <laughs> they've been so good to us through the years, right? Uh, but I myself am going to take the Browns and the points here. We have two teams heading in opposite, dire- opposite directions, two quarterbacks heading in opposite directions. Although I still contend with a little luck, Watson would have had a very good sure. game, uh, very good stats at least last week against the Raiders. The Browns, D, as you said, said, look, they were elite last year. And over their last three games, since that Cowboy game won, they're only giving up 18 points a game over the last Mm -hmm. three. I think the defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, he's pretty good, Sal. I think he'll devise a plan here to at least curtail Daniels a bit where the Browns stay in. I think this is a close one. Let's take the points here, Sal, in Washington. All right, that's good. Hopefully we'll cut that game out and no one will ever see it. But either way, if we don't, we got to take a quick break. We're going to get to the rest of the week five games. Will the Chiefs remain undefeated? The Saints come marching into Arrowhead Monday night. We have the answer to that specific query and more all next on Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. Cousin Sal's winning weekend here with my pal Darren, the parlay kid. We just gave out seven winners, and let's get to the rest of the week five games. And this one has the biggest total of the weekend, 49.5 NFC West clash as Arizona heads to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. 49ers, 7.5 point favorite. Like I said, 49.5 is the over-under. We're going head-to-head for the first couple of these in this uh, in this act here. San Francisco won four in a row in this series, all by 16-plus points. Everything would point to them. Last week, Arizona faced maybe the best offense in the league at Washington. They get a break with San Francisco. Does that sound right? It's true. But here's something interesting. Teams to lose by 17 or more points versus a team who mm-hmm. won by 17 or more points the previous week wins 60% clip the last 20 years. 49ers 2-6 and six against the spread in their last eight. 
Uh, I think the back door is open for Kyler Murray. 30-26, Parlay Kid. I'm taking the points. I got to go against you here, Sal. I'm taking San Francisco minus the seven and a half. Both home games this year, they've won in double digits. I see it being the same type of thing. I mean, the Cards D is allowing 26 points per game. It was terrible last year. It's really taking a very long time for this D to get up to par. San Francisco always beats up on these bad teams or the weaker teams. Take the 49ers, give them the points. All right. Go Denver and Las Vegas. I hate this game. Broncos yeah. two and a half point favorite. 35 and a half is the over under. It's hilarious to think that one of these teams is going to end up three, two, three and two, unless there's a tie. Um, I'm going to go with the Raiders. They've won eight straight and 10 out of 11 versus Denver. Antonio appears weirdly nine, three and one against the spread as the coach, yeah. head coach of the Raiders. This is the lowest total of the week, I believe. The Raiders can't run, and Bo Nix can't pass past the line of scrimmage in the first three quarters. This game's a mess, so I'm going to take the points, which you know could very well be Denver wins, but Raiders cover. I'm going to ride the head-to-head -head trend. Uh, Broncos caught rain in a bottle last week. Sean Payton's team falls short 19-14 and 14 in the battle of the worst potential 3-2 team ever. <laughs> Well, so these teams are strange, right? The Raiders beat the Ravens. The Broncos beat the Bucks. Weird teams here. But, Sal, there's one elite unit on the field here, and it belongs to the Denver Broncos. They've given up 29 points over its last three games. Stellar D, underrated D. I'm taking Denver minus the two and a half points. They cover and still a low-scoring affair, maybe like 17-13 here, Sal. Yeah, this is a good one to not watch. Um, a good one to watch in that late afternoon window. Green Bay at the Rams. Could have been better, but the Rams just uh, just plagued with injuries. Green Bay is a three-point favorite. Surprised me a little bit. 48 and a half. I think I guessed this at one or one and a half earlier in the week. Packers win at 31-20. I'm going to buy the half point just to save. I've been saving up for this. Well, I'm taking Green Bay here. So minus the three here in this game. And so one thing we're going to overlook here, this is a home game for the Rams. But let's face it, the Packers fans are going to flood this yeah. stadium. It's going to seem like a home game to Green Bay. I love the coaching matchup here. I love both these coaches. But the Rams offense cannot match the talent of the Packers offense. They got these young wide receivers running all over the field. Love took him a little uh, longer uh, than I hoped for last week to get going. But he found his stride a little too late, though, in that game. But he yep. keeps it going uh, this week. Green Bay covers the three points now. All right. Seattle, home for New York Giants. Seahawks are six and a half point favorite. 43 and a half is the over under. Um, I know it shouldn't make a difference to the spread, but I feel like Malik Neighbors, who I'm seeing likely not to play, if he no. isn't in this game, I don't know if the Giants have a prayer. And they may not anyway. He's been targeted 52 times this year. Uh, outstanding receiver and I'm seeing Singletary might be out too so I don't know what they do they do have the full rest advantage which I think you're going to lean on a little bit in Seattle you know they played last Thursday Seattle played Monday night in a like an emotional game against Detroit the running backs for Seattle have averaged 2.6 yards per carry after contact uh, that's best this season tied for third worst is the Giants in that category defensively so i think they're going to be running the ball a lot a lot of walker a lot of charbonnet uh under 4-0 in the giants games this year i'm going under 43 and a half little sluggish offense from gino off the short week 24 15 final yeah i don't love my pick here with the giants i'll get and give uh, getting the six and a half but i'm going with it you know seattle's off to a good start sal but i think we have to examine their wins and it's a, just a bit less impressive than you would think uh, with the teams they've beaten. Mm -hmm. Like you said, this is a full rest advantage for the Giants. Statistics and show that that doesn't really mean a lot anyway here. But I'm going to go with that here. Uh, Jones has played well in his two road games. Four touchdowns, no interceptions, a win in Cleveland. And so what should have been a win in Washington against a team that has really flourished since then. I think the Giants can just hang around in this one, make it an ugly type of game. I'll take the six and a half points. He always has a weird, Daniel Jones always has a weird road game where you're like, what, the, where did that come from? And then right. you're like, when you look back 10 weeks later, you're like, where did that come from? Again, right. you keep saying it. But okay, now our game, Sunday night, Pittsburgh, 
point and a half favorite against Dallas. I would have thought the Cowboys would be favored. Whatever. I don't care. Let it show off on the field somehow. Not a fun one. Offense probably not going to look too good. You know what you're getting with this Mike Tomlin team, right? The Steelers offense ranks 20th in EPA play uh, per play and like 6th in EPA defensively plays uh, yards allowed. Hopefully our run defense comes around a little since that Giants game. That'll be nice. No big runs out of Najee Harris. My thing is the Steelers opponents, Parley Kid, and then the Steelers to win the game. It pays about 7-1 to one this and every week. I do like us in the first half, getting a point and a half. Last three road games, 14, 20, and 21 points. That's what we've scored. We've averaged over 18 points in the first half. Maybe we get smacked around the second half. I hope not. I think Dak and the boys could put up points during the first 30. Give me one and a half in the first half. Big game for our team. Then I have to go on Simmons and just groan and grope the whole time. Very sad. Oh, Sal, I I hate to go against the Cowboys here, but I don't like them in this game. The Steelers are coming off a loss. Cowboys do have the extra rest here. They're coming off a win. Cowboys struggle against these blue-collar, lunch pail type of teams. Pittsburgh is going to try to run the ball. Dallas was finally good against the run, but I think Pittsburgh will have success in the run. Dallas will not. Dak's going to have to take to the air. Watt's going to get to him a few times. Dak is 1-8 and eight against the spread as a dog in his last nine. I just, Sal, I hate to do it. I just don't right. think they're going to, I don't think they could do it in this one. KC, <laughs> Monday night, 5 and a half, 43 and a half against New Orleans. I'm taking the Saints. The problem is I like this, you like this, Brother Brian likes this, and I think Harry likes this, but they have a plus point, 57 point differential uh, thanks to the Cowboys and Panthers, <laughs> two losses by four points. I think we see a lot of Butker, but we don't see a lot of that Chiefs offense. The five and a half is too much in this day and age with all those injuries. 23-19, Chiefs win, and the players' parents celebrate by robbing their neighbors. So I'm with you on this. I mean, the Saints could be 4-0. They're 2-0 against the spread as a dog. The Chiefs really won't, don't have an answer to replace Rice as of just yet. I mean, they do have Worthy. But now you're still missing a receiver to really compliment him. Let's take the Saints to cover. The Chiefs play a lot of close games here, so this will be another one. There you go. All right, excellent work, Darren Parley Kid. Hey, good luck to your Yankees in the playoffs against the Royals. You got you have a quick prediction for me? Uh, Yanks, uh, 3-1. They win the series. They normally dominate that AL Central. There you go. All right, 3-1 Yankees. Go bet that on FanDuel Sportsbook. We're going to be right back to wrap things up on Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. Welcome back. We're all out of time. We totally forgot the two-minute warning. My thanks to Phil Sims. I'm putting that Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC pick-in for him. You can watch my full interview with Phil on the Ringer's YouTube page. Thanks to the Parlay Kid for all those Week 5 winners, which almost certainly are going into a 15-team parlay. And most importantly, thanks to all of you for watching and listening. And please always remember, you may feel like an underdog, but just know you're all my favorites. Shana Tova and happy handicapping. (laughs) 